dropper posts. The best invention, well, since the bike, I think, anyway. And I certainly find it hard to ride without one nowadays on anything except than the smoothest trails. But how do you use them like a pro? Well, it's either up or it's down, right? Maybe. Maybe not. Here's how to use a dropper post like a pro. Most pros will go for the largest drop seat post they can get to fit their frame and to fit their size, because this is all about the insertion depth. But you knew that, right? Did you? Oh, um, so I kind of did as well, but anyway, for those of you who don't, basically not all drop posts are the same, and some will uh, go into the, to the seat tube further than others. You need to check that it will go far enough so that that height isn't too high, or maximum extension with the post fully sound isn't too high. So you can check your frame manufacturer's website and also the post website, and they'll give you those measurements, or you can watch this video from Doddy to help you out as well. The Enduro Pro Racers were the first to really get on board with dropper posts because it's a massive advantage. To begin with, they're mainly just you know sticking the post on full extensions for the climbing liaisons to get to the top of stages. Also using other tech like uh, lockouts on their suspension just to make their life as easy as possible. Then slamming the seat on the start line and riding the stages with it completely out of the way so you can ride the technical stuff a bit more easily or a lot more easily and, and faster as well. But actually, Enduro racing nowadays can be so big, so phys physical, that actually enduro racers will be using them quite a bit within the stages. Yes, you won't be getting as much power on the pedal sections with your seat high, but it just gives you a rest because some of these stages are so big that you literally couldn't stand up and crank them the whole time. So that's when they'll just pop the post. The trick to this is then being able to get it slammed back out of the way as quick as possible because dropping into those gnarly sections, especially if you don't know that trail very well, you're gonna have to do it as quick as you can to get in because riding these sections with your seat up or even halfway is gonna be slow, but also proper gnarly. Slamming the seat down on the steep sections is obviously going to help you move to the back of the bike, but also it can really make you stop quicker. Once you get that weight low and down to that rear tyre, you know, really getting that sort of drive into that back wheel to so hit the edges on the braking side of that tyre, really slow you down. And that's why you see pros, especially when it comes to really hard braking, they'll slam the seat and get back. Yeah, of course you can do it with your seat up, but being in that position, basically, you know, once you're there, it's okay, but getting back up and over the saddle is a really difficult position to be in. Yes, you can brake hard with your saddle up, but it's sketchy. Getting back up and over the seat on a steep trail is not a place you want to be. You often see the pros slam their seat before hard braking sections. Cross-country races have been a bit slower on the uptake of the dropper post, but they've become really common now as the tracks have almost become so technical that you can't ride without them. And it's really there you see the fluidity of the riders, side to side in the corners, front to back and obstacles, and then posts up and down all the time. You can see sometimes just how often they're popping their posts up and down. Sometimes just drop it an inch or so just to get some breathing space so you move around a little bit but still keep that pedaling efficiency. Yolanda Neff really is a master of the technical descent and you can see that she slams her posts on those descents. It really makes time on the other racers. One notable exception is Matthew Vanderpool, who is the one main big rider who doesn't ever use a dropper post. And actually that maybe cost him in the Olympics so he made a mistake on the big drop off, couldn't get behind the bike and crashed out. There you go, that's how to use a dropper post like a pro. One that I haven't mentioned actually is Fabio Wimner, he's got a good one, where he puts his helmet on his post, pops it and it flicks up high enough, it lands on his head, but mine isn't quite aggressive enough for that. So, you can try one at home maybe. Give thumbs up if you love dropper posts.